Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to the Frist Art Museum. The Frist Art Museum's building is located in downtown Nashville on Broadway. Today we'll discuss our building's architecture or how it was designed and built. Come on in. When you arrive at the Frist, you might park at our rear entrance and enter through our Turner Courtyard. After you enter the building, you'll walk through our Conte Community Arts Gallery. Next, you will encounter the Grand Lobby. Today, we'll be looking at many of the design details in this space. After you walk through our Grand Lobby, you can enter the galleries. Here, the Frisk displays art from all around the world. Wow, Megan, this is a beautiful building. Has it always been an art museum? Well, actually, no. The Frist Art Museum was originally built as a post office that opened in 1934. During the Great Depression, a period of economic hardship in the 1930s, the government decided to give money to communities for new building projects in order to provide economic relief to the country and create jobs for people. Nashville was given money to build a new post office. This is a newspaper article from 1933 that documented the hundreds of workers who applied for jobs to help build the new post office. Here's a picture of the post office being built in 1934. Creating jobs was not the only problem the new post office solved. By the 1930s, more than 10,000 trains were used to move the mail. Land next to the railroad station, Union Station, was chosen to be the site of the new post office. This is a postcard of State Union Station. And here's what the land looked like before the post office was built. You can see Union Station in the background. Wow, Sean, that's a lot of trains and a lot of mail. It's fun to think that people had to communicate by mail or by telephone then. There was no email, no internet, no Google, and no cell phones. People had to write letters, I guess mostly by hand. And I guess it took some time for the letters to be delivered. True, it was a lot of mail and took time to distribute, maybe days or weeks. Once the land was secured, Architects Joseph Holman and Thomas Marr were tasked with designing the new post office. Here's a drawing of their design. If you were the architects, what would you need to include in your design to make sure the activities or functions of a post office could be completed? Teacher, feel free to pause the video here and discuss this with your class. The post office needed ways to get the mail into the building and lots of space to sort the mail. The post office was connected to the train station by a bridge that allowed carts of mail to be moved into the building. You can see the bridge in this picture. The building also needed loading docks for the mail to be loaded onto trucks for delivery. Space like this one was where the mail was sorted it needed to be large enough to move the mail around the building. People and carts also needed to move through this space. The post office also needed a space for people to come in and get their mail in the ma mailboxes seen on the right, fill out forms at tables or buy stamps. And you would need offices for the postmaster general and other supervisors. Would the architect need to think about how the building looks, Sean? Yes, Megan, the architect would need to think about the design or aesthetics of the building and the style. What style of architecture would you use? If you were the architect, how would you design a post office? Teacher, feel free to pause the video here and discuss with your class. Let's think about how images communicate to the viewer. First, let's look at the exterior of the post office. The exterior's design is an example of strict classicism. Why do you think this type of design is called strict classicism? 
The use of classical architecture dates back to the founding of the United States. Its leaders chose classical architecture, recognizable by its use of columns and its symmetry, to symbolize order and structure inspired by Greek architecture. Think of the Parthenon in Centennial Park. Here at the Frist, details such as columns are stripped or simplified. Ornamental details associated with classicism are absent. The columns are part or attached to the front of the building or its facade instead of freestanding. Stripped classicism reflects the economically lean times of the depression, but it also allowed for the speed of construction. Now let's go inside and take a look at the Grand Lobby. Here's a picture of the Grand Lobby again when it was a post office. The interior of the post office is an example of Art Deco. This design style introduced geometric and floral designs such as chevrons, designs that look like stars or Vs, arcs, and sunbursts. Let's look at one Art Deco element the lobby's aluminum grill work. Here's a frieze or sculptured panel of icons, signs whose forms suggest its meaning. I can recognize some images. What do they mean? Why are they included in a post office? Teacher, feel free to pause the video here and discuss with your class. Here, we see four major modes of transportation used to deliver the mail. Airplane, train, ship, and car. The post office helped develop every new mode of transportation in the United States. These icons can also symbolize forward motion, industrial progress, and hope for economic revival. Sean, when did the post office become an art museum? By the 1980s, most of the mail was delivered by airplane instead of train. Oh, I guess an airplane was faster and easier in the 1980s than a train. The majority of post office operations moved near the airport in 1987. <laughs> there was a desire by the people of Nashville to repurpose the old post office and give the building a new function as an art museum. What functions would the architects need to incorporate into an existing post office to repurpose it as an art museum? Teacher, feel free to pause the video here and discuss with your class. Tuck Hinton Architecture and Design were the architects responsible for renovating the post office and designing the Frist Art Museum. As you can see here, the lobby mainly stayed the same. The Art Deco details were preserved and features like the stars on the lobby ceiling were uncovered after being painted over in the past. The postal tables and light fixtures lined down the center of the lobby were also preserved. The offices that were once on the left side of the lobby were converted to a gift shop. The mailboxes that were along the right side of the lobby were removed. Glass doors are in their place. This area behind the mailboxes has now been converted into galleries where the art is displayed. The space that is now the galleries was previously the area where the mail was sorted. The high ceilings in this area are well suited to their new roles as galleries. To bring natural light into the interior, clerestory windows or windows that were high in the building to allow light in were installed. An important part of museum architecture is facilitating the movement between spaces. Stairs were also added to this space so that visitors can easily move from the main level to the upper level. The upper level contains additional galleries, classrooms, offices, and art making studios. Martin ArtQuest Gallery, an interactive learning center for all ages, is also on the upper level. This space reflects the Art Deco style of the building. Do you recognize any Art Deco details? Icons, like those featured in the Grand Lobby, were created for ArtQuest. These icons symbolize different ways to make art. 
If you were to design your own icon, what symbol would you choose and why? Teacher, feel free to pause the video here and discuss with your class. We hope that you have enjoyed learning about the Frist Art Museum and its original purpose as a post office. It's good to think about ways we can repurpose existing buildings into new purposes as the needs of our community change. Thank you for visiting the Frist Art Museum with us today. We look forward to seeing you one day in person. Everyone 18 years of age and younger can come for free. We hope you enjoyed this look at our historic building. Bye, Megan. Bye, Sean.